Since its inception in 2009, Shark Tank has seen a menagerie of business ideas ranging from absolutely brilliant to totally bizarre. Over the past eight seasons, judges known as sharks have made many aspiring entrepreneurs' light bulb moments a reality by providing the startup capital and attaching their name to the business. Of course, they've also shattered many dreams and triggered waterworks from contestants along the way. One thing is sure, every once in a while there comes one product an entrepreneur pitches that makes you wonder how it is possible for someone to come up with that. But that's a big part of Shark Tank's appeal. If every product that got pitched on the show was perfectly reasonable and perfectly matched to some target market, the show's ratings would likely plummet. To keep things interesting, the show's producers will sprinkle in the odd product. But more often than not, these strange unexpected products are supported with amazing pitches, and they soon become extremely successful. Check out 10 of the insane products that actually got invested. Investments. Since its appearance on season 6 of the show, Squatty Potty has become a real success. In fact, the company furthered its fame by releasing a unicorn and rainbow poop themed short video in 2015, which raked in over 32 million views on YouTube. Though the investors initially laughed at it, once they heard that it had already grossed over a million dollars, it was hard for them to resist investing. Lori Grenier wound up exchanging $350,000 for 10% equity in the toilets stool, which allows users to adjust their posture and have an easier, more effective bathroom experience. When the mother of Bobby Edwards, the creator and CEO of Squatty Potty, was having constipation trouble, her doctor recommended she use the footstool to raise her knees while on the toilet. Her son knew there was a million dollar idea just waiting to come to fruition, and he was right. Loads of other toilet stools have followed, and scientific papers have been written confirming that they do indeed help make pooping easier. Sales for this ergonomic stool completely took off since then. Stools made from a variety of premium materials such as bamboo and teakwood are also available for purchase. The company was projected to make $30 million in sales in 2016. This is one of the oddest ideas in Shark Tank history that turns out actually works and solves a problem. Kitty Kitty is basically a litter box that you put over your toilet seat. Once your cat becomes accustomed to doing its business there, you can remove the inner part of the litter box section by section over time. By the end of the training period, the litter box is completely gone and your cat can use the toilet like a human. And while it might seem a little strange to some, former shark Kevin Harrington pounced on the idea, making a deal with Kitty 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 founder Rebecca Reskate worth $100,000 by receiving a 20% equity stake in the company. Rebecca later even reappeared on Shark Tank with another strange product called the Hoodie Pillow, a combination of a hooded sweatshirt and a pillow. But the Kitty Kitty will definitely remain her most successful discovery. Matt and Michael entered the Shark Tank with the primary goal of getting the Aluma Bowl into big retail stores, and they were looking for $100,000 in exchange for a 15% equity stake in Aluma Bowl. It's a universal experience. With this handy toilet light, stumbling in the dark when you have to go in the middle of the night is a thing of the past. The product claims to improve the aim for those who pee while standing without having to switch the bathroom light on. Matt also explained that the light in the Aluma Bowl was softer than a typical nightlight, and it was also motion activated, so it did not need to be kept on at all times. Kevin offered the budding entrepreneurs the $100,000 they were looking for in exchange for 25% equity in a Luma Bowl, which was the deal the pair took eventually, and Kevin declared that he was going to help light up America's toilets. When Rick Hopper, a former supervisor at Home Depot, designed his brilliant little magnetic set, he had no idea that his smart invention would make him a millionaire. The frustration from one unfortunate situation in 2010, when he found himself misplacing his reading glasses, led to Read Rest, a magnetic pocket filler that allows glasses wearers to clip their spectacles to their shirt when not in use. One side of the powerful magnet goes inside your shirt, the other on the outside. Once in place, you can pop your headphones, reading glasses, or sunglasses onto it whenever they're not in use. Unlike glasses kept loose in a pocket, the clip prevents them from slipping out and crashing to the floor when a person bends over. Hopper accepted an offer from Grenier and subsequently sold $100,000 in product the first time it appeared on QVC. They've since done over $27 million in sales. 
Entrepreneur and a professional artist, Steve Gadlin, had a dream to bring custom cat art to every home using the power of the internet. So, his one-man company had a simple premise, letting feline enthusiasts order custom-drawn cat cartoons. <laughs> I want to draw a cat for you. I want to draw a cat for you. I want to draw a cat. He went into the Shark Tank in season 3 asking for $10,000 for 25% stake in his company called I Want to Draw a Cat for You. Interestingly, Steve has completed more than 18,000 cat drawings for people all over the world. The cost of a drawing went from a ridiculous $9.95 to a bewildering $29.95. The most surprising part of Steve's pitch to the sharks was when Mark Cuban said he got it and invested $25,000 for 33% of the company, proving that all it takes is a dream. Neil Hoffman's Mensch on a Bench sells a 12-inch plush doll and storybook for children that introduces them to a Jewish tradition for each night of Hanukkah. The former Hasbro toy executive worked out a storyline and designed by himself and got Mosh the Mensch into retail outlets and online. Then, just four days before the first night of Hanukkah 2014, Hoffman pitched the Mensch to the moguls of Shark Tank. Besides sales, which Hoffman said hit $900,000 in 2014, 14, he also nabbed two sharks, software expert Robert Herjavec and retail and branding pro Lori Grenier. The two invested $150,000 to share 15% equity in the company, but not before Hoffman endured some harsh criticism from other sharks. Mark Cuban accused him of looking for investors prematurely because Hoffman had no idea how to grow the company. Kevin O'Leary, meanwhile, deemed the mensch nothing but a fad. Designed to enhance the kissing experience, Dallas Robinson and Mike Bonomo's lip balm comes in flavors like raspberry and lemonade. They created a product that, according to their words, creates a chemistry between two people. When two people kiss, the flavors combine to produce a sweet taste. Dallas said that they walk a fine line with their product since they came from a strong moral background, but that their families and especially their wives have been super supportive of their business, even getting jobs to support their husbands. The idea was intriguing enough that Mark Cuban ended up making an offer, which college pals Dallas Robinson and Mike Bonomo accepted $200,000 for 40% share in Kistix. According to the Huffington Post, Kistix saw a 3,000% increase in website traffic and sold more than 5,000 units following their appearance on the show. Lollaware was formed in 2015 by founders Chelsea Briganti and Leah Ann Tucker after learning about the 33 billion plastic cups that end up in landfills each year. Lollaware is the edible bioplastics company on a mission to reduce plastic waste and create a sustainable future with the world's first edible drinking cup. Their edible cups are designed to serve drinks and desserts at events and are flavored to complement any meal. It aired on Shark Tank in December 2015 and in in no time, a shark brawl breaks out. Cuban and Cochran partnered up to invest $600,000 for 25% of the company. The 100% all-natural, non-GMO compostable edible cups were seen by many to be the perfect solution to the growing plastic problem. Unfortunately, Lollaware's cups were a little too good to be true. In spite of their best intentions, they couldn't quite figure out a formula for the cups that could survive to ship. Chapel Cricket Bars are energy bars made with sustainable, protein-rich cricket flour. While eating insects is a common practice in many parts of the world, in the US, the idea of munching on bugs as a snack still leaves many people squeamish. Entrepreneur Pat Crowley, however, believes that his Chapel Bars can help people leap over this psychological hurdle of eating insects. For Crowley, this is important because insects are a much more sustainable source of protein compared to traditional sources like beef. When Crowley pitched his cricket bar company Chapel on Shark Tank, both Robert Herjavec and Mark Cuban made offers. Cuban ended up hopping away with the deal, $50,000 for 10% stake in the company. Since Shark Tank, Chapel Cricket Bars has closed its biggest deal ever with Sprouts Farmers Market, which now sells Chapel in all of its 217 stores across the country. He is working with a major protein bar manufacturer, has gone from two employees to eight, and is selling the cricket flour protein in one pound bags and single serving containers. 
Dude wipes is literally just baby wipes for men. It is designed to be used as the second wipe between two standard wipes with toilet paper. As weird as it sounds, it wasn't unpopular among the sharks because of their deal with the nationwide supermarket Kroger. But then, these entrepreneurs ended up securing a deal with Mark Cuban, $300,000 for 25% equity in the company. During the 2016 World Series in Chicago, there were several sightings of a dude wipe sign at Wrigley Field. The internet the internet took notice and Barstool Sports ranked dude wipes as the best sign of the weekend. Some people are saying it helped break the curse. Soon, dude products appeared in 500 Target stores across America. But after they made their deal with Mark in 2015, they went from $250,000 in sales to $3.2 million in sales in less than two years. Today, dude is now in over 12,000 total stores, including Kroger, Major, Jewel, Target, Safeway, Albertsons and Walmart. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.